So, nabasa nyo sa screen, ito yung text natin. And we are now in chapter 4. Nandito tayo sa second section ng Hebrews. Nakikita natin dyan, ang warning is, don't disobey the voice. And Jesus is being compared to Moses. And Jesus is greater than Moses. And last week, last Friday, nakita natin kung bakit great yung salvation. Bakit siya tinawag na great? Meron siya mga present benefits. And uh, natalakay na natin yung apat dyan. And this, this evening, tatalakayin po natin itong pinakahuli. Those who believe enter God's rest. Ito po isa kasama sa mga benefits natin bilang Kristiyano as part of our salvation that we enter God's rest. And uh, of course, tinalakay na rin natin to yung mga future benefits na uh, why we are called crowned with glory and honor. This evening, we will answer this question, what is God's rest? Ano ba yung tinutukoy dito na kapahingahan ng Diyos? Doon sa Genesis, mababasa natin, when God finished His work to create the whole universe, He rested on the seventh day. Itong Hebrews chapter 4, ang sinasabi niya rito, we will be able to enter that rest as well. Yung rest na pinasok ng Diyos or yung kapahingahan ng Diyos after He created for six days, ito yung tinutukoy niya rito ang mapapasok natin. And in what sense that man may enter it? In what sense mapapasok natin yung rest na yon na uh, naging kapahingahan ng Diyos after He created the whole universe, after He created all of us? At uh, ito po yung dalawang main argument natin, dalawang two main arguments is that number one, to answer that question, uh, the Sabbath rest or God's rest for Christians is not what is more popular, popularly known today. Yung, yung Sabbath rest na tinutukoy niya rito is not what we have been taught for a very long time. Yung popular understanding about Sabbath rest sa chapter 4 is not the same. And number two, second point natin sa ating argument to answer the question, those who obey His voice, meaning the voice of God, enter God's rest by faithfulness to Jesus. Yung rest na tinutukoy sa Genesis, yung nagpahinga ang Diyos, we will also be able to enter that by our faithfulness to Jesus. By your faithfulness to Jesus, you will also be able to enter the same rest. And ewan ko, napan- napanood niyo na ito, uh, it's uh, the Ch- Chariots of Fire. Dito sa 1981 movie na ito, pinakita rito yung story ni Eric Liddell. Noong 1924, uh, participant siya sa Olympics. Uh, British Olympian po siya. But he refused to complete yung kanyang 100 meter race. Actually, he did not run the 100 meter race. Yun po yung kanyang expertise. The reason is, it was held on Sunday. Kasi si Eric Liddell, si Liddell, naniniwala po siya that uh, Sunday is uh, meant for the Lord. And dahil doon, hindi niya tinakbuhan yun. Instead, nakipagpalit siya at tumakbo siya sa 400 meter race. And still, he won the gold. And after the Olympics, he continued this missionary work in China. And he spent his missionary and ministry and life doon sa China. For the rest of his life, he stayed there. I don't know if you watch this, uh, Hakso. No, dito sa movie na ito, noong 2016, uh, dito na feature yung life ni U.S. Army Corporal Desmond Doss. He served in World War II sa Battle of Okinawa sa Japan. Pero unlike uh, many other soldiers, he refused to fight because he was a pacifist. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya naniniwala sa violence. And not only that he was a pacifist, he was also a vegetarian. Hindi siya kumakain ng meat. And he was also a Seventh-day Adventist. Sabatarian po siya. But still, despite that, despite of his principle of non-violence, he was awarded the Bronze Medal of Honor because he saved 75 men in the war as simply as a medic. And last, dito sa ating uh, example sa screen, I don't know if you are familiar with this, Chick-fil-A is an American fast food chicken burger chain founded in 1967. 
ng isang Southern Baptist na si S. Truett Cathy. Ang distinctive features na ito compared sa ibang fast food chain, aside from the quality food and service that they provide, it closes its restaurants on Sundays. And also during Thanksgiving and Christmas, kung saan maraming kakain, nakaklose sila. Kati, uh, yung Southern Baptist na si Kati, said this is one of their ways of honoring God. Ito sa mga binigay natin examples, these, are, these stories have one thing in common. They are known for their conviction to honor the Lord in what they believe to be the Sabbath day of rest. Lidel, si Kati, si Dos, they are just three among the many Sabbatarians. Tawag po sa kanila Sabbatarians. Ang kaibahan lang kay Lidel at kay Kati, uh, sila ay m- more precisely called Sunday Sabbatarian. Si Corporal Dos, he was a Sabbatarian in the true sense of the word. Kasi yung Sabbath means seventh day. Ito po yung dalawang pagkakaiba nila, no? Saturday Sabbatarian or simply Sabbatarian, they believe the seventh day is one of the ten observing or keeping the seventh day is uh, one of the ten commandments that must be continued and must be observed. Ibig sabihin, you have to cease from work, from any activity, from sunset of Friday until sunset of Saturday. Some people say it's Saturday. Actually, it's a Friday sunset hanggang Saturday sunset. Yan po yung true sense sa batarian na katulad ng mga Seventh-day Adventists. Yung Sunday sa batarian naman, they redefine the meaning of Sabbath. Instead of the seventh day, they called it one of the seven. And they teach that uh, the, the day of rest is changed from Saturday to Sunday. Yan po yung pagkakaiba nila. While it is true, uh, we should not ridicule them or find fault for their honoring the Lord in the day of their personal choosing. Now, we learn this from Romans 14. Now, sabi sa 14 verse 5 to 6, One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all day alike, each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. Ibig sabihin, kung personal nilang choice yon to honor the Lord on, their, on the day that they choose to honor the Lord, it is their right. No, and you should not find fault or uh, say uh, ridicule them for having that conviction. Na si Lidel ayaw niyang tumakbo, That's fine because he wants to honor the Lord. He should be respected. At ganun din si Kati kung he wants to close uh, his fast food chain on Sunday uh, to honor the Lord, we should respect that. That's their personal choice. Okay po yun if it's a personal choice. But it is quite another, different na po kapag if a preacher from enforces his personal conviction to his congregation. And then, for example, I say, okay, ang Sabbath natin is Friday and all must observe Sabbath. And then, all who do, who do not observe Sabbath should be rebuked at nagkakasala sila sa Lord. That's another thing. No, hindi na po ito yung sinasanction ng Romans chapter 14. Ang sinasanction ng Romans chapter 14, kaya sabi rito, one person, one who observes in honor of the Lord, it's a personal choice. Kung ikaw as an individual, that is your way of honoring the Lord, that's fine. Pero kung ang isang pastor o preacher, sinabi niya, lahat tayo ay dapat mag uh, tumigil sa anumang ginagawa natin on this particular day, then that's different. Uh, we cannot enforce what the Lord does not command uh, sa bawat uh, Kristiyano. In fact, sabi sa, Ro- sa Colossians chapter 2, sabi dito, by canceling the record of death that stood against us with its legal demands, he set aside nailing it to the cross, disarming the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the thing things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Kaya hindi da- dapat tayo husgahan kung hindi tayo nag-observe ng Sabbath or wala tayong 
kinikip na araw to honor the Lord. We have that freedom already because the demand and the sanction even para sa mga Israelite, para sa mga Jew, hindi na po yun legal requirement. Kaya yung mga authority, religious authorities that uh, judges people for working on any day, uh, it's no longer they no longer have the moral authority or the power because this been this this has been cancelled. Sabi dito na yung legal demands na yon napako na sa krus. When we entered the new covenant, when Christ, when God established the new covenant in Christ, uh, that uh, command has no longer any authority. At uh, kaya sinasabi, sinasabi natin sa number one argument natin, the Sabbath rest for Christians is not what is more popularly known today. So yung, hindi na po yun Sunday, hindi na po yun Saturday. This is not the context of Hebrews chapter 3. Hindi po yan ang tinutukoy ng Hebrews chapter 3. At narito yung mga ibang sub, sub points natin. Ang sabi kasi sa Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, it is entered pinapasok, it is reached. And hindi po niya ginamit yung Sabbath keeping or Sabbath observance. Therefore, it is not a holiday. It is not a day of rest. If you want to have a day of rest for yourself, fine. But that's not the subject of Roman uh, Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4. Yan, makikita natin dito sa chapter 4 verse 1 to 3, entering his rest. Reaching, they failed to reach it. Yung mga Jews, nung time ng desert rebellion, they failed to reach it. No? But sabi niya rito sa bandang ibaba, For we who have believed, enter that rest. Tapos yung mga kinaputan naman ng Diyos, sabi rito, They shall not enter my rest. So ang subject po dito sa chapter 4 is not a day of rest, but another. It's different. Okay, next argument po natin is, it's not a seventh day. It's not Sunday, but as long as it is called today. When it, when we compare it to days, no Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, hindi po siya any day in particular, but as long as it is called today. Yan po yung sabi. Sabi na basa natin. Ika nga, ang, if you want to title this, to have a title for this message, we can entitle this uh, in Latin, Carpe Diem, which means seize the day. Now, this is the Carpe Diem for Christians. Sis the day. Yan po ibig sabihin yan in, uh, from Latin. Ang sabi sa Hebrews chapter 3, kung babalikan natin yon, sabi doon, Exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today. Dito, makikita natin ang definition ng Hebrews, ng writer, ng author, na as long as it is called today is any day. Any day. Monday man yan, Tuesday man yan, uh, anumang araw yan. As long as it is called today, you can enter the rest. Makikita natin yan dito sa definition niya sa chapter 13. So therefore, it is not a specific day, but every day from that moment on. At ito pa yung sabi sa verse 4 hanggang 7. He has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. Na para kay God, ang seventh day niya, ganito, God rested on the seventh day from all His works. Yan po yung Sabbath Sabbath, Sabbath day, definition ng Sabbath day is yung day na nag si God after creation. Then, sabi sa Psalms 95, yung binasa natin last time, they shall not enter my rest. Ibig sabihin, hindi nila mapapasok yung rest na kung saan nagpahinga si God. Hindi nila mapapasok yon. Then, sabi ng Hebrews, ang conclusion niya, since, therefore, it remains that for some to enter it, ibig sabihin, may makakapasok pa at merong hindi makakapasok, And those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Then he again, sabi ng author ng Hebrews, ang conclusion niya, this is his own conclusion that we are studying. Sabi niya, he appoints a certain day today. Saying through David, so long afterward, kasi nangyari yun, 10 centuries later, in the words already quoted, today, if you hear his voice, Do not harden your hearts. So it's not Sunday, it's not Saturday, but today. Kung baga, applicable yon today, this moment, this uh, itong Friday. Di ba? Kasi today din ito. No, kung ano yung present, that's the day. Kaya seize the day, carpe diem. Di ba? Seize the day. As a Christian, we have to seize the day. And in what sense are we supposed to seize the day? Yan po yung inaaral natin ngayon. 
Third argument natin that uh, Sabbath rest in Hebrews chapter 4 is not what is popularly known today is is not the Canaan promised land. Hindi po yun yung, yung land of Palestine na kinatitirahan ng state of Israel ngayon. Kasi sabi niya sa chapter uh, 4 verse 8, For if Joshua had given, given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. So hindi po yun yung promised land na pinagdalan sa kanila ni Joshua. Si Moses hindi nakapasok sa promised land. Yung generation ni Moses hindi nakapasok sa promised land. Pero si si Joshua sa yung mga generation after the previous generation, yung second generation na napalaya sa Egypt, nakapasok sila sa promised land. Pero ang sabi dito ng Hebrews chapter 4, Joshua, hindi rin, hindi rin niya nadala ni Joshua sila sa rest ni God. Yes, napasok nila yung promised land, pero hindi napasok ni Joshua yung rest ni God. Kasi... Nung sinulat ito ni David, yung Psalm 95, kung saan sinabi niya, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, nasa promised land na siya. Kaya ang argument ng author ng Hebrews, this is not what Joshua had given them. Kasi ang argument niya, if Joshua had given them rest, then God would not have spoken of another day. Now, if you know the historical background of Joshua, they were actually able to enter the promised land. Pero nung time na nasa wilderness sila, sabi ni Moses sa kanila sa Deuteronomy, kasi naalala nyo, Deuteronomy was written before they entered the promised land. Sabi dito ni Moses, You shall not do according to all that we are doing here today, everyone doing whatever is right in his own eyes. For you have not yet come to the rest. Hindi pa ninyo napapasok yung rest. And, sabi niya, to the inheritance that the Lord your God is giving you. Para dito kay Moses, this take yung rest sa promised land. Hindi niya pa napasok yung rest at saka hindi niya pa napasok yung inheritance. Ang tinutukoy niyang inheritance na mapapasok nila later on is yung promised land. is different from the rest. Now, pag napasok nila yung promised land, dito they will have rest from all their enemies. Yan po yung sabi ni Moses. Yan po yung inheritance nung generation na yun. When they enter that rest, When they enter Palestine, they will they will rest, have rest from all their enemies. But the rest na tinutukoy niya pa rito isa pa ay iba pa. Now, kung babasahin niyo yung yung uh, yung Joshua which we will do in a moment, uh, before we do that, ito yung fourth argument natin that it is not what is popularly known today. It is not rest from enemies. It is not rest from their enemies. It is not rest from your enemies. Si Joshua sabi niya sa chapter 21 after they conquered many areas in 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 Palestine sabi niya thus the Lord gave to Israel all the land that he swore to give their fathers and they took possession of it and they settled there and the Lord gave them rest on every side just as he had sworn to their fathers not one of all their enemies had withstood them for the Lord had given all their enemies into their hands Not one word of all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed. All came to pass. Para kay Joshua, naging kasangkapan siya para mapasok at makamit ng Israelites yung pangako, lahat ng pinangako ng Diyos sa Israelites. Kahit yung kapahingan sa mga kalaban. Pero like I said, yung argument ng Hebrews is not talking about this rest. Ang argument ng Hebrews hindi nabigay yun sa kanila ni Joshua. Yes, nabigay ni Joshua yung rest, temporary respite against their enemies. And yes, they were able to obtain all the inheritance of the land. Uh, but that's not the rest that God uh, is talking about after He created the whole universe and rested on the seventh day. This is not God's rest. Hindi pa yan yung God's rest. And uh, number five, God's rest is not death. So some people will say, oh, Sabbath rest is when you die, you you go into the presence of God, uh, and you will rest. Yes, it's true. Sinabi sa Revelation uh, chapter uh, 14, verse 13, 
Sabi po rito, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Sa Revelation chapter 14, ang rest po doon ay death. They died serving the Lord. They died uh, persecuted. And now, because they died, they rest from their labors and their good works, their deed follow them. No, nandun na sila sa presence ni God. Yan yung rest sa Revelation 14. But this is not the rest na tinutukoy dito ng uh, Hebrews. Hindi po ito yung uh, the seventh day that God rested. Hindi po yan yung tinutukoy ng Hebrews. When you die, you don't enter God's rest. Ang tinutukoy dito ng Hebrews, sabi niya, uh, Let us therefore strive to enter the rest. Ibig sabihin, ngayon pa lang, ngayong buhay ka pa. While you are still alive, you can still work, make every effort, a labor, strive to enter the rest. Ibig sabihin, ngayon, maaka, mapapasok mo na yung rest. So that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. You don't have to wait for you to die to enter that rest where God rested on the seventh day. You can enter it by making an effort to enter it. Yan po yung sinasabi niya. Okay, so number six, that Sabbath rest in ha- is not what is popularly known today is that Like I said, it is available to our generation. It was available to the past generation. And it will be available to our future generation, to our children and their children. It will remain available as long as it is called today. Habang merong today sa generation na yon, entering the rest will, re- will remain open to anyone, to anybody who will listen to God's voice. Kaya sabi niya rito again, Uh, let me just say it again, re- read it again. There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. So, it was available in the people of God in the wilderness, no? nung nasa desert sila, nung time ni Moses. It was available in the promised land, nung time ni David, na nando na sila sa promised land. They still have the opportunity to enter that rest. And it was available when the author of Hebrews wrote his epistle to them. No, available yun. They can enter the rest. And today, right now, it is available to all of us. Second argument, second main argument po natin, those who obey His voice enter God's rest by faithfulness to Jesus. Like I said, you don't have to die to enter the rest. You can enter it now by obeying the voice because of your faithfulness to Jesus Christ. Now, sa, sa mga early Christians, No, like for example, nitong si, nung 4th century, si John Chrysostom, ang interpretation niya dun sa rest ng Hebrews chapter 3 ay the kingdom of heaven. Well, nabasa natin uh, sa Hebrews, sa introduction, sa last time, I reminded you that the kingdom of heaven will happen uh, in the world to come. Yes, we will enter the kingdom of God. Uh, we, will, we will have dominion in the world to come. And in fact, Itong si John Chrysostom ng 4th century, that's what he believed. Yan ang pinaniniwalaan nilang rest na mapapasok nila kapag dumating yung kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God. So kasi para sa kanila, yung 6-day yung creation is equivalent to 6,000 years of human history. And then, yung 1,000 years sa kingdom ni God, yun yung 7th day. Kaya ang total is 7,000 years before we enter the final state. No, wala nang uh, when uh, when everything is new in the new heaven and the new earth. No, wala nang death, wala nang Hades, wala nang hell, wala nang Satan. After 7,000 years, yun po yung paniniwala ng early Christians. Kasi yung rest para sa kanila, yung Sabbath rest is entrance to the kingdom of heaven. And this is one example of that si John Chrysostom. Then another Christian nung uh, 3rd century, 2nd century to 3rd century, late uh, 2nd century or early Uh, 3rd century, sabi niya, uh, that rest ay na-fulfill or ma-fulfill when all flesh, meaning every nation, come to adore in Jerusalem God the Father to Jesus Christ's Son. As was predicted through the prophet, Behold, proselytes through me shall go unto you. Yan po yung paliwanag ni Tertullian sa chapter sa, chapter sa Isaiah tungkol sa, sa kingdom of God. So, ganun din si Tertullian katulad ni uh, Justin Martyr, ang paniniwala nila, uh, entering the kingdom of God 
when it comes down from heaven is is that rest, the Sabbath rest. But then there is another early Christian, itong si Justin Martyr, nung uh, second century, uh, early or middle second century, ang sabi niya, this new law, no? kasi inabolish na yung old law, di ba? yung old covenant, para sa kanya abolish na yon, pinalitan na ng new law, ang sabi dito sa new law na ito, you are required to keep the perpetual Sabbath. Kasi as long as it is called today eh. So ibig sabihin patuloy yun. Nagpapatuloy yung Sabbath na yon, perpetual po yon, as long as it is called today. This new law, you are required to keep it. Itong Sabbath na ito. And because you are idle, because you are idle for one day, ang tinutukoy niya rito, ah, nag-Sabbath rest kayo, no? Wala kayong ginagawa sa Saturday. O akala nyo, you, akala nyo you, are, you are pious. Akala nyo you are pious uh, because you're not doing anything. That means you are not discerning what uh, has been commanded by this new law. Ang sabi niya, sabi pa ni Justin Martyr, The Lord our God does not take pleasure in such observances. Hindi daw naggagalak ang Diyos kung wala kang ginagawa on a Sabbath day. Kasi hindi na yun valid. Hindi na yun valid, sabi ni Justin Martyr. If there is any perjured person or thief among you, let them cease to be. Ang tinutukoy dito na perpetual sabat para kay Justin Martyr is obeying the word of God by abstaining from anything that is called sin. By abstaining from anything that is called sin or by repenting, repenting from adultery, repenting from uh, thievery. Sabi niya, by repenting constantly, you are keeping the perpetual Sabbath. Then, sabi niya, he has kept the sweet and true Sabbaths of God. If anyone has impure hands, let him wash and be pure. By repenting, by obeying the word of God, by obeying this new law, you are therefore keeping the Sabbath. So, I think sa mga early Christians, si Justin Martyr is onto something. Ibig sabihin, siya yung uh, uh, nakagets nung uh, point nung Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4. Okay? Therefore, ang sub-argument natin para sa number two is that we are to enter God's rest by faith. It is by faith you enter God's rest. Not by Sabbath keeping, not by observance, but by faith. Sabi sa chapter 4 verse 3, For we who have believed enter that rest. Tayo daw sumampalataya, past tense, enter that rest. Ibig sabihin, pumapasok tayo ron. Patuloy tayong pumapasok doon. Uh, hindi sinabi entered, hindi, hindi past tense, hindi completed na. Ibig sabihin, nandun tayo on, on, a, on a daily basis, as long as we believe, as long as it is called today, we enter that rest. We are seizing the day, carpe diem. And as he has said, as swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. And number two, faith. Ang faith dito, kung saan mapapasok mo yung rest ni God after He finished the work for six days, para mapasok mo yon, you have to have faith. Anong klaseng faith yon? Anong quality ng faith meron ka dapat? The faith that is obedient. At kasi dito, ang synonym dito ng faith is obedience. Ang synonym ng unbelief ay disobedience. No? Sa verse 4 hanggang verse 7. Sabi niya, They shall not enter my rest, since therefore it remains for some to enter it, And those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. They did not believe the good news. No, the good news came to them to them in a different form. No, yung good news na na natanggap natin ay tinanggap din nila but in a different format. But the same word of God, the same good news. Hindi nila yun napasok ang rest ni God because of unbelief which is also disobedience. So like I said, Faith is synonymous here in obedience and unbelief is synonymous to disobedience. Okay? So makikita natin repeated several times sa chapter 3 and chapter 4. O sa chapter 3 verse 18, disobedient because of unbelief. Chapter 4 verse 6, because of disobedience. Chapter 4 verse 11, they fell by the same sort of disobedience. By disobeying God is equivalent to unbelief. Unbelief is equivalent to disobedience. Therefore, obedience is equivalent to faith. Faith is equivalent to obedience. Dito sa chapter 4 and chapter 3. Okay? Third argument. The written word is God's voice in this context. Dito sa context na binabasa natin, ang voice ni God dito 
ay yung written word, yung Psalm 95. Para sa atin yung Hebrews chapter 4 and chapter 3 and Psalm 95. Yan po yung voice ni God na dapat nating papakinggan araw-araw. And then we enter God's rest araw-araw. We enter that perpetual rest katulad ng sinabi ni Justin Martyr. Sabi niya rito sa Hebrews chapter 4, saying through David, So, yung, yung Hebrews, yung author ng Hebrews, kilala niya si David ang sumulat ng Psalm 95. And yet, at the same time, sinabi niya sa earlier, sa chapter 3, verse 7 to 9, the Holy Spirit says it. So, para sa kanya, hindi siya nakukonfuse na kahit sinulat yun ni David, yung Holy Spirit pa rin ang nagsasabi nun. So, ibig sabihin, yung sinulat ni David is God's Word. No? Yung, yung, yung binabasa nating Bible, that's the Word of God. Para sa Hebrews, ganun din siya. Yung binasa nila, na sinulat ni David, kahit sinulat yun ni David, yun ay word ni God. Kaya yung mga nagsasabi na hindi word of God yung Bible, yung mga nagsasabi na hindi word of God itong scriptures, porque sinulat ito ni David, sinulat ito ni Paul, at may mga ibang nakasulat dyan na sinalita ng ibang tao na unbelievers, katulad ni Ed Lapis who says, it, God's written word is not the Bible. The Bible is the God's written word is not the word of God para kay Ed Lapis. He's wrong. This he is proven wrong by Hebrews chapter 4. I know there is another preacher in I think in, in Qatar ang pangalan niya is Mario Bermejo and he says it only becomes word of God the scripture only becomes the word of God when you use your vocal cords to speak it or to preach it. Kapag binasa mo at sinalita mo if you use your voice to read or to speak God's the, the scriptures, then it becomes the word of God. So para sa nila, as it is written, hindi siya word of God. Kailangan pang isalita mo para maging makonvert sa word of God. And he is also proven wrong by Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4. Kasi para sa Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, yung sinulat ni David, yung sinalita niya at sinulat niya sa Psalm 95, ay ito yung tinutukoy ng Hebrews na sinabi rin ng Holy Spirit. Okay? So, yung Holy Spirit ang nagsasalita sa Bible kapag binabasa natin. That is the, the voice of God for us and for our future generation and the generations after them. Okay? So, meron siyang high view. Itong author ng Hebrews, he has a high view of scriptures. Calling it, he even calls it living and active. Sabi niya sa chapter 4 verse 9 to 12. Okay, because or for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Sabi niya, the word of God is living. No, may mga tao na nagsasabi, ang tinutukoy dito na word of God ay si Jesus. Kasi si Jesus yung word of God sa John chapter 1. Kung si Jesus yung Word of God sa John chapter 1. Therefore, itong Hebrews 4.9, si Jesus din ang tinutukoy. Well, he's wrong. Mali po yung nagsasabi ng ganon. You cannot interpret Hebrews chapter 4 using John chapter 1. Dahil may sariling context ang Hebrews chapter 4. Sa context ng Hebrews chapter 4, yung Word of God na tinutukoy niya ay yung sinalita ng Holy Spirit at yung sinulat ni David, yung written scripture. Okay, yan po yung tinutukoy niyang Word of God na living. And why is it called living? Because it still gives life today. No, it still has relevance for us. Kahit sinabi yun noon sa, sa time ni David, kahit sinabi yun noon sa time ng Hebrews, kahit binabasi natin yun ngayon, it's still alive, it still speak relevance, it still have relevance for us. It can still give us life, itong scripture na binabasa natin. If we obey it, if we have faith uh, that does nothing but hindi yung dead faith but living faith. Now it is active, meaning it achieves its purpose. Effective po siya, meron siyang ina-accomplish. No, na-accomplish po niya dito sa context na ito, ang ina-accomplish niya is to penetrate, uh, nakalagay dyan, to discern the thoughts and intentions of our innermost being, our heart. Ibig sabihin, it judges us, it exposes us, it exposes our sins. No, kaya sinabi niya rito yung metaphor na it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of our heart. It exposes us. It is sh- sharper than any sword. Kung baga, kung kahit sugat-sugatan tayo, hindi tayo ma-expose yung ating kasalanan. Pero kapag itong word of God ay 
binasa natin, in-exhort natin day by day sa bawat isa, it convicts us. Kaya sometimes sasabihin natin kapag may pinapangaral na salita ng Diyos, bakit ako pinapatamaan ng preacher na to? Bakit ako pinapatamaan itong nagsasalita na to? Ako na naman pinapatamaan. It's not actually just like that. Ano? Hindi lang yun preacher malamang ang nagpapatama sa iyo, kundi yung word of God is being active and being sharper than any two-edged sword. Ine-expose niya yung, pag, yung motivations mo. Ine-expose niya yung mga kasalanan mo o yung kasalanan natin. No? Kaya ang sabi natin last time, listen to God's voice. Don't listen to your heart. No, our heart is deceptive. Diba? Sabi sa Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. If you listen to your unbelieving heart, you will fall away. So don't listen to your heart. No, listen to the voice of God. Your heart is not the voice of God. And number five, this is also important, ano? Beware of fake voices of God. Mag-ingat tayo sa mga peke. Maraming peke ngayon. No, I'm referring to false teachings. So, sabi dito ni Peter, The false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. Among you! Ibig sabihin, you, they are members or even preachers in the church who will sec- secretly bring destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them. Ibig sabihin, binili sila ng Panginoon, di ba? Ibig sabihin, Christian na sila. Binili sila ng Panginoon, Christian sila. And still, they will secretly bring destructive heresies and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many, because they are teachers in the church, many in the church will follow their sensuality. Because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. Ibig sabihin yung truth, kinocompromise nila, no? Pinablasphemed nila yung word ni God. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not sleep, asleep. So, be careful. No, wag po tayong lazy, wag po tayong tamad. Discern the preachings of that we hear everywhere. Kahit itong binapakinggan nyo ngayon, discern it. Sinasabi ba ni Kuyalito rito ay totoo, scriptural ba to? Because we don't want to listen to fake voices of God. Okay? And number six, Do not equate the signs that you see every day as God's voice. They are not the same. Hindi po yung pareho. No, yung nangyayari ngayon sa paligid natin, sometimes we have a tendency, oh, this, is, this is because this happens, therefore, it is God's will. And then we assume everything that happens is a sign from God and we equate it to God's voice. No. No, hindi lahat ng nangyayari po ay equivalent sa word ni God. No, they happen for a purpose. Some of them, we, we may never never know what they mean and why God allowed them to happen. Some things God allowed to happen kahit hindi according sa will niya. Some things God make sure He happens because it is according to His will, but not all the time. So, when people sins, ibig sabihin ba nun, will ni God na magsin ka? Someone does something evil, no, ginawa niya yun, is it a sign that God's will is that for Him to do evil? No, di ba? So, don't equate the signs to God's voice. Now, maganda example dito ay yung nangyari sa sa Judges. Kung mababasa niyo yung mga, yung mga verses na yan, 17.7, 18.1, 19.1, 21.25, 21, sa Book of Judges, no? masyadong brutal yung mga nangyayari sa Book of Judges if you read it, if you have read it. And the reason why uh, the author keeps saying Itong uh, phrase na ito, itong sentence na ito, sabi niya, In those days, there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Ibig sabihin, hindi nila sinunod yung, yung babala ni Moses, na huwag nilang gawin yung ano sa palagay nilang tama sa kanilang sariling paningin. Hindi nila sinunod yun. Sa halip, kahit nasa land na sila, nakapasok nila, na sila sa promised land, ang ginawa pa rin nila, they did everything that was right in his own eyes. Therefore, Since yan yung palaging sinasabi sa judges, ibig sabihin yung mga nangyari sa judges are bad examples for us not to imitate. But we don't have to justify everything that they did in the book of Judges. And one of the things that many Christians today are justifying is what Jephthah did sa kanyang anak. What happened to Jephthah's daughter? 
Kasi si Jepta, nangako siya sa Panginoon, sabi niya, If you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out of the door doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the Ammonites shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Yan, yung mga para sa mga may hilig sa signs. No, umaasa sa signs. Kapag ganito nangyari, ito yung will ni Lord, ito yung gagawin ko. O, kapag nangyari ito, I promise, ito yung gagawin ko. Jephthah is an example of that. No, ano nangyari? Sabi sa Judges 11 verse 32 to 35, the Lord gave them into his hands. Binigay nga ni God yung mga Ammonites kay Jephthah. Therefore, he won. And then pag niya, ano nangyari? When Jephthah came to his home at Mizpah, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and dances. So, yun ang sign na nakita niya. So, ang conclusion niya, oh, the Lord gave them, the, the enemies, into my hand. Therefore, I must fulfill my vow. Because si yung anak ko ang, ang pinalabas ni, pinakita ni God sa akin. So, Jephthah is assuming, is equating the sign that he saw to be God's word. to be God's voice that he must follow. Kaya ang sabi niya, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you have become the cause of great trouble to me, for I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I cannot take, my, take back my vow. And then, ang ginawa niya, nagpaalam yung daughter niya, and for two months, at sabi dito, go, okay, you can go for two months, and she departed, she and her companions, and they wept, for her virginity on the mountains, and at the end of two months, she returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow that he had made. And she had never known a man, and it became a custom in Israel. So many Christians, I know, they justify what Jephthah did, na justify nila by saying, uh, Jephthah did not actually burned, burnt his daughter as a sacrifice, Kasi ang sabi dito, no, wept for her virginity and she had never known a man. Para sa kanila, ang ibig sabihin dito, nag, na, nagmongha na lang siya. Naging uh, virgin na lang siya. She died uh, soltera. Soltera na lang siya. Kasi ang sabi dito, di ba? Wept for her virginity and then she had never known a man. Ibig sabihin, na-distract sila nitong statements na ito. Pero ang sabi dyan, napakalinaw po. Ang sabi po dyan, she returned to her father who did with her according to his vow. And what was his vow? His vow was, I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Yan po yung pinangako niya. We cannot contradict what he what the scripture says. We cannot justify what Jephthah did. No, kasalanan dito ni Jephthah, he have mistaken the signs as if it is God's voice. Pero actually, because of that, he disobeyed the word of God. Ano ba yung word ni God sa Deuteronomy? You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every abominable thing that the Lord hates, they have done for their gods. For they even burn their sons and their daughters in the fire to their gods. Everything that I command, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take from it. So makikita po natin, ano? Hindi equivalent yung mga signs na nakikita natin sa paligid natin to the voice of God. Pero marami pong Christians ngayon ganyan. No, kung ano nangyayari? Nagganap ito, and therefore it is the will of God. It is, the, it is in accordance to His word. And therefore, we must believe it. Wrong. This is an example of that. And to what kind of uh, people can we compare those who mistake the signs to the word of God? Yung mga nag- nagbabasa ng horoscope, Di ba, they are so reliant doon sa mga horoscope. Ibig sabihin, yung signs, they see it as their destiny. No, anong kaibahan ng mga Christians na nagmi-mistake sa signs na sa paligid nila sa mga nagbabasa ng horoscope? They are the same. They are similar. Okay? So now, I'm reminding you these things so that you will not confuse uh, your heart or the fake teachings, the false teachings, or the signs that is happening around us with God's voice. God's voice is distinct. God's voice is different. It is in the written word. Yan po yung voice ni God. Huwag na kayong maganap ng ibang vo- tinig. No, na- nasusulat na po yung tinig ng Diyos para sa atin. And, last but not the least, it is to be exhorted to one another daily. Sabihin po ninyo, daily. To be exhorted to one another daily. No, I don't think nagagawa po natin to. We Mas nasishare po natin ng meme. O yung mga criticism natin kesa, kesa sa in-exhort natin yung word ni God. Or we are commanded to be exhorted, to exhort one another daily 
uh, with the word of God, with the voice of God. Alam po ninyo, yung mga early uh, Christians ng time ng Hebrews, they faced hostilities. They struggled with sin. Uh, some of them, they were imprisoned. They were mistreated. And they, they were being seduced with diverse and strange, strange teachings around them. Ganon din po yung sitwasyon natin. No, yung circumstances nila, they have been pressured uh, to, because of their circumstances, they are pressured to go back to their old lives and go back to their old religion with all these threats. The author prescribed a solution, daily exhortation of God's word, so that when they hear God's voice, their heart will not, will not be hardened. Because of the threats around them. Kaya sabi niya dyan, ano, sa verse 13 ng chapter 3, binasa natin last time, Exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That's his prescription. Every day, exhort one another, as long as it is called today. Now, sabi po sa John 10, 14 to 16, Don't listen to any voice. Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of Christ. Now, I'm the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. We are to listen only to the voice of Christ. Not to the voice of our hearts. Not to the signs around us, not to the fa- fake voices of God, but to the voice of Christ written in the scriptures. So brothers, if you are brothers and sisters, if you are sheep of the Lord, no, don't listen or obey your heart. Don't listen or obey the signs. Instead, let us exhort one another with the word of God that we may obey it and so that we will not have our hearts hardened with the deceitfulness of sin. And I'm not talking about daily personal reading. I'm not talking about that. No, you can read your Bible. This is not the the this is not what the book of Hebrews is telling us. We have no excuse. We're talking about being ex, uh, able to exhort one another. Yan po yung sinasabi rito sa atin ng Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4. Now going back uh, as as a conclusion, going back to the question, uh, what is God's rest? And in what sense that man may enter it? Para naman, makapasok din tayo ron. No, If you are like them, the author of Hebrews, yung mga ng time nila, if you are facing hostilities now, if you are struggling with sins now, if you are in prison, or not literally in prison, or in prison by bad habits or old habits, or if you are being mistreated, or if you are being seduced, by diverse and strange things, ideologies, strange teachings, ang sabi po dito, strive, labor, and make every effort to be faithful to Jesus. No, we enter, we enter God's rest when we are faithful to Jesus, regardless of our circumstance in life. No, if, even if you're facing hostility, be faithful to Jesus. Even if you're struggling with sin, be faithful to Jesus. If you're imprisoned, Uh, and mistreated, be faithful to Him. And if you are being seduced and diver- uh, with, with strange teachings, remain faithful to Jesus and you will not be hardened. Sabi niya rito, let us therefore strive to enter that rest. Make every effort to enter that rest. Labor to enter that rest. If you are pressured around you, no, if you are being threatened by trials and temptations, no, strive to be faithful to Jesus so that No one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Ibig sabihin, don't give in to the pressure. Don't give in to the temptation. Don't give in to the trial. As long as uh, you don't give in to them and remain faithful to Jesus, you are at rest with God. So this is the sort of carpe diem for us, for Christians. Seize the day and exhort one another. So if God's rest was available to the people of Israel in the wilderness, their Jesus in the wilderness was Moses. And their gospel that came to them came in a different form, no? different form of God, but still God's word. But instead, they constantly grumbled against Him. And therefore, uh, they disobeyed God and they were not able to enter His rest. It was also available. No? Available din ito ng time ni David. And again, on time ng author ng Hebrews. And God's rest is also available to us even now. Ngayon. No, since the day. 
Uh, but it is not what we traditionally think. Uh, it is not a holiday. It is not physical rest. It is not idleness. It is not the land. It is not the land of Palestine. Alam ko, maraming gustong pumunta doon. No, kasi you want to have a pilgrimage. Kasi uh, it's a holy land. Di ba? Gust, maraming gustong pumunta. But it's not that land. That's not the rest. And it is also, you don't have to wait for it for the kingdom of God to come, to enter the rest. It is not the future kingdom. Ang tinutukoy po rito is accessible to us now. Uh, it is our carpe diem, no? It is that seize the day moment for every Christian. To be faithful to Jesus is to enter God's rest. This is our conclusion. And in faithfulness to the Lord, we will not give, give way to any threats, any temptations, any trials of this world. And while these things are... Uh, these trials and temptation, they are road signs that are telling us, go back to the land of Egypt. Ibig sabihin, go back to your old lives. Yung mga temptations na yan. Go back to your old religions. Yung mga pressure na yan. Pinipressure tayo to, to give up our faithfulness to Jesus and lead the life that we lived before. No, don't listen to them. Listen to God's voice. Uh, that's why it's important that the gospel, the word of God, must be exhorted daily in Christ so that we are reminded that only in Him, only in Him, that our work is complete.